With the acceleration of global warming since the second industrial revolution, specifically from 1880 to 2012, the average temperature planet-wide has risen by almost one degree Celsius, 0 0.85. Heat-trapping gas emissions in our atmosphere are the highest they've been for 800,000 years. The thing about fossil fuel is it's not forever. Sooner or later, the world will run out of dead dinosaurs that have morphed into elements for gasoline and other chemicals. Plenty of critics believe we as a planet have to get off the fossil fuel train as quickly as possible or else. But of course, there are other lines of thinking. Welcome to Midpoint, the founder for the Center for Industrial Progress and the author of The Moral Case for Fossil Fuels. It's a pleasure to welcome Alex Epstein into the show today. Alex, we thank you so much for joining us today. Hey, Ed, good to be here. Alex, let's get right to it. What is the moral case for fossil fuels? I'll let you state that one first. Well, the moral case for fossil fuels is that it is the right thing to do to use more fossil fuels, both in the short term and the long term. Now, more fossil fuel. You have to know that the first thing out of people's mouths are going to be what we just saw on a, a little video clip here coming into this segment. Fossil fuels mean pollution. Fossil fuels mean a problem with the environment. Let's not, we could go into global warming here and go off on a tangent and take years for talking about this, but they're saying it's bad, it's wrong. We as a planet have got to get off that. So how do you then justify the moral case and say that we've eventually got to get off it before it all disappears and destroys us all? Well, it's interesting that people equate having a challenge or even a problem to being a catastrophe that we need to end. And those aren't the same thing. So take something like an antibiotic that can cure you of a disease. Antibiotics have risks and side effects. In fact, I believe they have many more than fossil fuels do. And yet we use them and consider them moral because overall they're unbelievably beneficial to life. So if you're looking at fossil fuels and you just talk about something like 0.8 degrees Celsius and act like that's the end of the world, there's a real bias and you're not looking at the big picture and you're gonna make a wrong decision. But does not at least some of the decisions that we have seen now from a lot of the climatologists will tell us that certainly, and I don't think you'd argue with this either, that what happens with fossil fuels is at least a part of what's happening to the planet right now. So people will say, well, if you can take that out of the mix, at least it's something instead of nothing. Well, but interest, look at the focus there. So the focus there is our, our, when we think about fossil fuels, our goal should be minimizing human impact. Let's make sure we're not even warming things just a little bit. Whereas my focus is when we're thinking about anything, let's focus, about max, focus on maximizing human well-being. And that means that if fossil fuels are the only way of providing cheap, plentiful, reliable energy for billions of people, then that matters a lot more than 0.8 degrees of warming, even if they could attribute all of that to fossil fuels, which they can't. So again, we're not thinking big picture. There's a clear bias, and really we're not thinking in terms of human well-being. And that's a real theme of my book. To be moral should be to benefit human well-being, but a lot of environmentalists don't care about that so much. They just want to minimize our impact. They think human beings are just bad in the way that we live, and I think that we're good. Well, here's what the environmentalists will fire back. They'll say, how can you actually help humankind when what you're doing is something that will poison humankind? Well, I'd say that you have to actually have evidence uh, for that claim. So you have to look at, for example, um, what are the long-term trends? Environmentalists have been claiming for decades that fossil fuels are causing catastrophic resource depletion, catastrophic pollution, catastrophic climate change. Uh, and yet, if we look at all the data, human well-being in all of those areas has been going up. We have more resources than ever. We have things like cleaner water than ever. And in terms of our safety from climate, whatever the temperature change, you're far less likely today to die from a climate-related cause like a drought or a flood or a heat wave than you were 80 years ago. Actually, you're you're 50 times less likely. So the ener and energy is a crucial part of all of those improvements. Well, let me just make sure that I'm understanding. You're not saying here that fossil fuels are not, are, are you saying that fossil fuels are not a part of the problem? Of what problem? Of the problem actually of global warming, pollution. You're saying it's not that big a deal? Well, I, to, to demonstrate that it's a problem, if you have a moral framework of your focus on maximizing human life, you have to show that there is a problem for human life. People consider it a problem if human beings are having any kind of impact or change. But that's an anti-human view. The view is, oh, if climate change is due to natural causes, that's great. Because, of course, historically, we've had really rapid warming, say, to get out of an ice age. You know, Canada used to be under 1,000-plus feet of ice. 
Um, so I don't subscribe to the idea that if human beings are impacting things, it must be bad. Now, we can create negative side effects, particularly in the realm of real pollution, not, not CO2 emissions, but those should be dealt with technologically and in a big picture way, not by saying, oh, if we impact anything with fossil fuels, let's shut the whole thing down. That's an anti-human view. Now, I got a couple of minutes left. A few things that come out of the book right away that I found interesting. One right at the top. You believe that the, the line that fossil fuels are dirty is a myth, correct? Mm -hmm. Would you explain that? Yeah, so, so dirty, I mean, dirty, dirty can have two meanings. One is it just has dirt, but of course, nature is, is a dirty place, and supposedly environmentalists, many of whom are hippies, should you know, like dirt. Uh, but what dirty really means in its usage is unhealthy for human beings. So to test if something is healthy or unhealthy, you have to look at its impact on life. And take something even like the dirty, quote, tar sands in Alberta that we're supposed to be afraid of and not build a pipeline for. What are, they're dirty in nature, but what human beings do is we take them out of the ground and we refine them and purify them so that we can have relatively clean burning gasoline and diesel fuel and jet fuel. But then we burn and, them and it goes into the atmosphere, correct? Well, but, but no, but, I mean, most of the elements of it don't go in the atmosphere. Most of it, for instance, the sulfur, we can refine most of it out and use it for things like organic uh, agriculture. And we get better and better and better at purifying things. So actually, we're, we're taking dirty nature and making it cleaner and benefiting human life. The key thing here is that energy can empower you to improve everything in life. So if you want clean water, if you want plentiful food, you have to be in favor of cheap, plentiful, reliable energy, and fossil fuels are by far the best way to get it. I've only got about 30 seconds left here, but you realize that everything you've said here, you'll have people shaking their head for days now because you're basically pointing out that everything that we know now about fossil fuels is wrong. You've gone completely 180. Well, I think it's the thinking method is really wrong. That's why you get to the wrong conclusion. So the key is think in terms of maximizing human well-being, think in terms of the big picture, and check out moralcaseforfossilfuels.com, get the first chapter free, and see if I'm crazy or if I'm right. All right. Well, hey, trust me, there have been people who say that I'm crazy sometimes, so don't sweat it. You're probably in good company, and so am I. Let me just go ahead and point out to everybody again that what we're talking about here is a radical look at what we have been told many times over and over again in the media. This is called The Moral Case for Fossil Fuels. It certainly is worthy of an examination in the entire argument. Alex Epstein, thanks so much for your time. Thanks a lot, Ed. All right, break, and we return with the president's shot across the bow on immigration, and we ask someone who's thrilled with the outcome why we've reached this in the first place. And at 51 minutes after the hour, telling it like it is, shirt storm, and much more. <laughs>